and welcome to the second part of this tutorial. This one is actually going to teach you how to create teleporting inside a Grand Theft Auto. The teleporting option actually allows you to move from place to place quickly. It's actually an old process known as transporting. In other words, to move seamlessly from one place to the other as if magically reappearing somewhere else. So anyways, the teleporting option is a real interesting feature inside of Grand Theft Auto. I use it to move back and forth between the airport, the top of the skyscraper, or from island to island. It doesn't matter. Whatever you choose to do is up to you. Basically, here's how it works. And let me again use my favorite search tool here. To use the search tool, just basically click on the Control F and that's the fine for Visual C++ and it will actually automatically bring the window up there and populate it usually in the right hand corner but not always and you just go in here and you type in the find what and I just typed in teleport as you can see right here click on the find next or enter and it will cycle through the code until it finds all the occurrences of teleport and eventually we'll find ours right here we are okay so this is where it all starts out and to give a brief introduction to this, because this is going to seem a little confusing to people who don't have experience with C++, a float is actually an operation. It's a number. I forget what the range is. It goes from 0 to... I'd have to grab my book to really look at it. It goes up pretty high, though. And it's used with decimal points. Notice that these have decimal points in between them. That's how the locations are set up in Grand Theft Auto. They're set up on X, Y, and Z coordinates. The X and the Y and Z, don't ask me to explain those, but that's how it's set up. It's set up in an X position, Y position, Z, usually meaning up or down at the same time. So anyways, what do you're looking at, like for example, this first line right here, is actually an actual location you will appear to. This is the X, this is the Y, and this is the Z, and this will actually need to be inserted inside of the teleport feature to actually work. And this is actually known as what's called an array in C++. I've set the array to a max of 300, although I might not have that many characters here, but it gives more room in case there is a buffer, buffer overflow. So basically, we're going to next, we're going to kind of scan down here a little bit. And down here below, here we go. These, this is actually the printout. So when you come to this coordinate, as I mentioned earlier, at teleport 1, or actually that would be teleport yes it would be one you would actually be at the shoreline of Algonquin which is actually very close to the beginning of the game if you've seen one of my other videos where Nico's flying that's where it starts off at that exact location so the shoreline of Algonquin overlooks the city of Algonquin from the smaller island and this will actually be inserted inside of this teleport option here to work somewhere else inside the code so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to search for the teleport option where it's going to search for it inside the game here. Oops, let's try that again. Okay, now it's going to search for the next occurrence, and here it's found the first function that we're looking for. And of course, if you look inside of here, you'll see that again, the teleport right there. And this is how it's being stored. Now, to kind of explain this, the function, of course, is called teleporter active, which I've chosen. You can use any name you want. I just selected that for my own my own reasons. And this is uh, basically how it works. Of course, this is the object, and pad is always used to identify the player, wherever the player is positioned. This next position actually, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not the best at explaining this, but this actually traces it to the location of where the player is inside the object oriented language and these are the coordinates x y and z and this is where it actually gets and it searches these x y and z's for these coordinates to insert them inside the object itself the next line below here is actually a routine that's used to print i use this as a print it's actually a, a print format that is used to print this spread f f f dash s this is used as to um, an option. It's almost like storing this inside of an actual variable. And the variable is right here. It's str8, which is actually inserted down here. So it takes this and it inserts it into here to allow this printout. So this line right here will say teleported to. And notice the s, the f, the f, and the f. The, x, the s actually represents a string. 
which if you remember earlier in the code board it said Shoreline of Algonquin. If I could actually go back there real quick. See if I can go back there and kind of jump back and forth here to explain this a little bit better. Actually, it's going to go me back up here, so I need to kind of just jump back to the top here again. To go back through the code here. So it's right here. So right here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one. Actually, this will make it a lot easier for me. I'll just copy this whole line here. And that will tell me to go back there anytime I want to go back there. So we'll use that to go back. And then we'll use the other one to go back. Actually, where was that? Right there. To go back and forth. So if I want to go back and forth, basically, I just do this. Oh, I forgot to save it. Well, I think I have it in here. There we go. So I just uh, I can flip back and forth by doing that. So anyways, that will tell you. So the teleport x where it's stored here is the x coordinate. This is the y coordinate and this is the z coordinate. So it's storing all these locations inside of that earlier code I showed you when you go back here to the teleport. Actually, let me get it back up there again here. It stored everything inside of these x as I showed you earlier, x, y, and z. This is where it's storing everything inside of these these coordinates. So let's go back down again. Wish there was an easier way to do this. Fortunately not. But it'll have to work for now. And it's storing it right in here. And this is actually going to be used somewhere else inside the program later and I'll show you where. What this next one does is actually sets character coordinates which is actually looking for the coordinates X, Y, and Z to mark your location of your player. This actually gets the coordinates and this actually is actually the if I'm explaining this correctly, this is the native that actually defines where in memory the X, Y, and Z are going to end up at. And that's why set and get are used together a lot. I've noticed that a lot. I still don't understand the whole thing, how it works, but that's kind of explaining the basics of it. The next line is a set color. This is used a little bit differently. I probably won't go into more in depth than this to try to throw people off, but these two lines right here with this two line is used to print di different types of text format which I use for my menus inside of my trainer. If you actually run, if you actually look at one of my demos, there's a good example, one of my YouTube videos, you can see this actually in action. If you look in the upper left hand corner, you'll see this little text and mine's like in green and white and blue or whatever. You'll see these um, lines printed down telling about the menu options. And this is what this is basically doing. This is displaying this at every one tick, every one tick, every one tick a tick timer so it's, it's based on a timer so every time every time the timer goes tick one time it's gonna actually incorporate this to the screen and again don't ask me to explain that right now because I don't want to throw people off but this is um what this is basically doing is it's printing out this teleport ported location in bigger text you'll see I think I believe mine set it green and that's what this set color does it just sets the RGBs for green this is the RGB for like a I think it's like a light green or something like that and this is basically what it's doing is it's taking these uh, coordinates and it's sticking them inside of there to actually make the magic work now this is probably a little bit confusing but this is kind of how um, the program works you notice the X Y and Z I've got these stored right here in the coordinates and these right here are going to be floating point values if we go back here again oops I forgot if we go back here again these are the floating point values right here. X, oops, I forgot. X, Y, and Z, right there. X, Y, and Z. So those are the floating point values. And if you go back down, these coordinates, X, Y, and Z, are stored right in here. And these would be the actual floating coordinates, what you saw earlier. That's kind of the basics of how the teleporting option works. I use this to actually be able to make a player go from location to location. This actually is a little complicated to understand, but it's actually cycling through an array. And it's if you go back here again, we'll go back to the main line again. Actually, here we go. Nope. We go back here through the main line. It's actually cycling through each of these one by one. And basically what it's doing is it's going through each of these. Every three of these, it's going through these. It's set to go every three because of X, Y, and Z. 
and every time it hits z zero, actually this would be zero because it's a pointer. Pointers always start at zero. So this would be a zero, one, two, three. Wherever you see the quotes that separates the places in between the pointer itself. So this separates the location from zero, one, two, three, and so on. And these are actually printing out the messages. And notice the name tell name. Don't forget the name tell name. We'll go back down here to the other one. And tell name is right here is where it does all the printout. And it prints it to the string. It'll print it actually at the bottom of your screen there. This is just tutorial one. I'll have more tutorials to come. Thank you for watching.